Section 21 of Talks by Abdul Baha given in Paris by Abdul Baha Abbas. Translated by Lady Sara Louisa Blomfield. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Talks by Abdul Baha given in Paris by Abdul Baha Abbas. Section 21 Pain and Sorrow, November 22nd In this world we are influenced by two sentiments, joy and pain. Joy gives us wings. In times of joy our strength is more vital, our intellect keener, and our understanding less clouded. We seem better able to cope with the world, and to find our sphere of usefulness. But when sadness visits us, we become weak, our strength leaves us, our comprehension is dim, and our intelligence veiled. The actualities of life seem to elude our grasp, the eyes of our spirits fail to discover the sacred mysteries, and we become even as dead beings. There is no human being untouched by these two influences, but all the sorrow and the grief that exist come from the world of matter. The spiritual world bestows only the joy. If we suffer, it is the outcome of material things, and all the trials and troubles come from this world of illusion. For instance, a merchant may lose his trade, and depression ensues. A workman is dismissed, and starvation stares him in the face. A farmer has a bad harvest, anxiety fills his mind. A man builds a house which is burnt to the ground, and he is straightway homeless, ruined, and in despair. All these examples are to show you that the trials which beset our every step, all our sorrow, pain, shame, and grief, are born in the world of matter, whereas the spiritual kingdom never causes sadness. A man living with his thoughts in this kingdom knows perpetual joy. The ills all flesh is heir to do not pass him by, but they only touch the surface of his life. The depths are calm and serene. Today, Humanity is bowed down with trouble, sorrow and grief. No one escapes. The world is wet with tears. But, thank God, the remedy is at our doors. Let us turn our hearts away from the world of matter and live in the spiritual world. It alone can give us freedom. If we are hemmed in by difficulties, we have only to call upon God, and by his great mercy we shall be helped. If sorrow and adversity visit us, let us turn our faces to the kingdom, and heavenly consolation will be outpoured. If we are sick and in distress, let us implore God's healing, and he will answer our prayer. When our thoughts are filled with the bitterness of this world, let us turn our eyes to the sweetness of God's compassion, and he will send us heavenly calm. If we are imprisoned in the material world, our spirit can soar into the heavens, and we shall be free indeed. When our days are drawing to a close, let us think of the eternal worlds, and we shall be full of joy. You see all around you proofs of the inadequacy of material things, how joy, comfort, peace, and consolation are not to be found in the transitory things of the world. Is it not then foolishness to refuse to seek these treasures when they may be found? The doors of the spiritual kingdom are open to all, and without is absolute darkness. Thank God that you in this assembly have this knowledge, for in all the sorrows of life you can obtain supreme consolation. If your days on earth are numbered, you know that everlasting life awaits you. 
if material anxiety envelops you in a dark cloud spiritual radiance lightens your path verily those whose minds are illumined by the spirit of the most high have supreme consolation i myself was in prison forty years one year alone would have been impossible to bear nobody survived that imprisonment more than a year but thank god during all those forty years i was supremely happy every day on waking it was like hearing good tidings and every night infinite joy was mine spirituality was my comfort and turning to god was my greatest joy if this had not been so do you think it possible that i could have lived through those forty years in prison thus spirituality is the greatest of god's gifts and life everlasting means turning to god may you one and all increase daily in spirituality may you be strengthened in all goodness may you be helped more and more by the divine consolation be made free by the holy spirit of god and may the power of the heavenly kingdom live and work among you this is my earnest desire and i pray to god to grant you this favour the perfect human sentiments and virtues november twenty third abdul baha said you should all be very happy and thankful to god for the great privilege that is yours this is a purely spiritual meeting praise be to god your hearts are turned to him your souls are attracted to the kingdom you have spiritual aspirations and your thoughts soar above the world of dust you belong to the world of purity and are not content to live the life of the animal spending your days in eating drinking and sleeping you are indeed men your thoughts and ambitions are set to acquire human perfection you live to do good and to bring happiness to others your greatest longing is to comfort those who mourn to strengthen the weak and to be the cause of hope to the despairing soul day and night your thoughts are turned to the kingdom and your hearts are full of the love of god thus you know neither opposition dislike nor hatred for every living creature is dear to you and the good of each is sought these are perfect human sentiments and virtues if a man has none of these he had better cease to exist if a lamp has ceased to give light it had better be destroyed if a tree bear no fruit it had better be cut down for it only cumbereth the ground verily it is better a thousand times for a man to die than to continue living without virtue we have eyes wherewith to see but if we do not use them how do they profit us we have ears wherewith to hear but if we are deaf of what use are they we have a tongue wherewith to praise god and proclaim the good tidings but if we are dumb how useless it is the all-loving god created man to radiate the divine light and to illumine the world by his words action and life if he is without virtue he becomes no better than a mere animal and an animal devoid of intelligence is a vile thing the heavenly father gave the priceless gift of intelligence to man so that he might become a spiritual light piercing the darkness of materiality and bringing goodness and truth into the world if ye will follow earnestly the teachings of baha'u'llah ye shall indeed become the light of the world the soul for the body of the world the comfort and help for humanity and the source of salvation for the whole universe strive therefore with heart and soul to follow the precepts of the blessed perfection and rest assured that if ye succeed in living the life he marks out for you eternal life 
and everlasting joy in the heavenly kingdom will be yours and celestial sustenance will be sent to strengthen you all your days it is my heartfelt prayer that each one of you may attain to this perfect joy end of section twenty one